You are watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's why we carry a different nature of God. We, we carry the nature of the devil when we're unregenerated, even as others. But God, I like the buts of God, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein, wherewith he loved us, it's because of the love of God, because of the love of Jesus, that he became a substitute. The word substitute is a great il illustration of that in the Old Testament, uh, the, in the temple and in the tabernacle, as you, a lot of times they would bring uh, sheep or goats, and uh, you've heard the word scapegoat. Well, they would take one goat and sacrifice it, and that goat would represent the blood of the scapegoat. And, uh, and once that was shed, the blood was even put on that scapegoat, and they were released, and they could go free. Well, that's, that's called a scapegoat. Why? Because there was a substitution. <clears throat> and the substitution was, was the lamb, uh, or uh, uh, the Lamb of God, in which we, we are allowed to escape uh, judgment. Amen. Uh, uh, as believers, once we receive Christ into our heart, excuse me, once we receive Christ into our hearts, into our lives, and He became our Father, and we're, we, we became His sons, uh, he became our father, and we, we joined his family. Amen. And so <clears throat> that's an exciting thing. Uh, it's the same picture when Abram or Abraham took his son Isaac, and uh, he took him to a high mountain because God led him there. And he went up there, and he began to uh, tell his son, we're going to the top of that mountain. And he didn't bring no substitute goat. He didn't bring... Anything. He just brought his son up there, and uh, but he knew by faith. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews says that he was so persuaded that God gave him that promise that if he drove a knife through his heart, God would raise him from the dead. So he is willing to do that. And just before he drove a knife through his heart, as he laid him down as a sacrifice to God, God said, "Stop." And, and uh, he was well pleased with what he was willing to do. And it spurred something in God. Uh, it's no surprise to God. God knew what he's doing. But he would, God will never ask you to do anything he's not willing to do himself. And he wasn't willing to do uh, for Abraham, ask Abraham for his son and not willing to give his own son. And so, and so that's, that was a covenant uh, uh, reaction that was a, a covenant uh, purpose and plan and principle of God that if I ask you to do something it's because I'm willing to do it myself and so uh, he untied his son and and uh, thank God for that and and then he looked over and there was a goat in the thicket stuck in the bushes now, what is the chances of that <clears throat> God brought a substitute for him, and that, and so he sacrificed that goat and shed that blood on the behalf of his son, and his son was was the was able to escape punishment, uh, and and that represented basically what Jesus did on the cross. He gave his life. He became the sacrificial lamb, shed his blood, so that we can escape judgment or the wrath. That's what that means. As, as I was reading to you in that, in that passage of Scripture. And uh, uh, here, right here, it says that, even, even when we were dead in sins, He quickened us together with Christ. Amen. By grace are you saved. Verse 6 of Ephesians <clears throat> chapter 2, verse 6 says, And has raised us up together. See, there's a reason why when we receive Christ that we don't stay in the same position. Some people say, well, you think you're, 
You're bringing Christ down to your level and you're raising yourself up. No, he raised us up. We're in Christ. If he's seated at the right hand of the Father, now it says we, he made us, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So now we're at the place of authority because Christ is. Now we're at the place of acceptance. Why? Because Christ is. You got that? If he's seated in heavenly places, Paul's trying to get a revelation to us because of this great redemption uh, plan of God that we've been given and reconciled unto favor. Now we're to go preach about, and now we are ambassadors of the message of reconciliation, that people can be, uh, be brought back to favor with God. Glory to God. Amen. So, so God has given us authority to do so and to preach this message because this is what Paul's preaching. That in the age to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace or favor in his kindness towards us. Hallelujah. In his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? So in, in the book of, uh, of Mark, and, and, and with a thought again, once again, that, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head. What is that talking about? Well, let's go to Mark 16 and let's, let's build off of that scripture. He gave all things, uh, all, what he's saying, he's gave power and authority to the church. Amen. And this is the problem that the church has missed. They've missed this revelation. And Paul was trying to help people understand what revelation they don't want to miss. Because if you miss this revelation, then you'll, instead of being one that dominates or has dominion over the devil, the devil will remind you of his dominion over you. Amen. If you don't understand your authority, then you won't operate in authority. Amen. First, we come under authority of Christ. Then we operate in authority. That's what the centurion man was saying. You don't need to come to my house. You speak a word only. And I know my servant be healed. Uh, he, he was saying, I'm a man of authority. I understand it. And, and people under me understand authority. I put them there because of the authority I have. Well, that's what Jesus did. He gave us authority. In fact, that's what it says here in, in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What's that? Substitutional, redemptive uh, plan of God. Amen. That we can be with favor, reconciled unto favor with God. Amen. Wiped out our sin and the generational curses of sin and sickness, disease. All those things are wiped out. Glory to God. And, and it says uh, the gospel to every creature. Amen. That means everybody in the earth. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be condemned. Now watch this, verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Or these signs shall follow the word as preached. One translation says it like that. The signs and wonders shall follow the word. Amen. That we preach the good gospel. And these signs shall follow them that believe. What? Uh, in my name they shall cast out devils. I mean, you'll have dominion and authority over devils. Why? Because they're under your feet. Uh, they're under the authority of the head, the body. Uh, or, or the head and the body operate together. Amen? Jesus is the head and we're, we're the body. So that means the feet, that's talking about the body of Christ. My God, it's important that you get this. Amen? 
And in my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak in, in new tongues. Amen. They shall talk, or take, excuse me, they shall t take up serpents. Now, don't get goofy about that. He's not talking about going kissing snakes and let them bite you. And, uh, and you know, no, he's talking about, you remember when Paul, uh, later on, he, this happens with him. He's the, the ship that had been going around in a little hurricane for 14 days. Uh, he, he said, look, we're gonna, you're going to lose your ship and your cargo, but your lives will be spared. And they ended up on, a, on an island somewhere. And, and so he's, I'm sure they're all close to hyperthermia and they're on, on the beach. And he's making a fire. And a snake was in the, in the uh, branches or wood that he's throwing in the fire and bit him. And uh, uh, some scholars say that the snake that bit him on that island uh, was a viper that was a very, very poisonous viper and that a person usually died within four minutes to 10 minutes. Oh, my Lord. Uh, and, 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 and they looked at him and said, well, he's a goner or he's a real man of God. Either he's a real man of God and this is the proof or he's, he's going to die. You know, uh, maybe it was a lucky guess that, you know, he prophesied this ship is, we're going to lose it, but we'll all live. And looked around and saw they all lived, exactly what he said. And, and what's amazing, he was, a, he was a prisoner, he was in chains, <laughs> and he lived, praise the Lord. And uh, so, anyway, uh, uh, that's what it's talking about. It, it, by accident, a snake bites you, you don't have to die. Amen. And uh, especially when you're preaching the good news. They, they shall, uh, uh, it goes on to say, and shall drink deadly poison. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm, I've heard of ministers or missionaries where uh, they would put snakes on purpose, the witch doctors, in, into the little hut, uh, slime through a window, uh, or sometimes uh, to, so that the missionary would be bit and die. <clears throat> and God would warn, as one missionary talked about, and God warned him, he said, what they're going to do. And uh, I don't know if he killed the snake or whatever, but they didn't kill him. And, or they put poisonous spiders or something like that, or try to poison them. And, and well, a snake carries poison, uh, a spider carries poison, or drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. Amen. When you're out preaching the gospel, God will protect you. Amen. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, who's going to cast out devils? Who's going to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover? Them that believe. He says, he that believes. Amen. These signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great? And uh, so... Um, in the book of Matthew, Matthew 28, I want you to look at that. Hallelujah. God has given us power, dominion over the enemy. Amen. Uh, look with me in Matthew chapter 28. And it's also in, in chapter 16. Uh, I didn't read 15. It says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. And, and, uh, but prior to that, Jesus said this in Matthew the same account, but I want you to look look with me in Matthew 28. I'm using not using my computer; it's usually a lot faster than me turning this, these pages. But that's all right. Sometimes we need to stick with the paper. Amen. So Matthew 28:18 says says this. Uh, and Jesus came and spoke to them, who his disciples. And he said, all power and authority has been given unto me. 